Welcome everybody once again to this elegant table and today we're going to look at the travellers uh, by way of looking at two firms. One is King of the Travellers and the other is Pave Lackey. Just before we start, can we just remi remind ourselves of the plot of King of the Travellers? If you just look at the screen, please. Directed by Mark O'Connor and with a cast that features members of the travelling community, King of the Travellers tells of the feuding Morehouse and Power families as their long-standing conflict is renewed. This becomes more complicated when John Paul Morehouse falls in love with Winnie, the daughter of the Power Clan's patriarch, echoing the story of Romeo and Juliet. The ongoing feud also brings the families into conflict with the settled community, particularly the trigger-happy farmer Tom Dunn, who is trying to evict the families from his land. We learned that 12 years earlier, John Paul's father was murdered, with John Paul suspecting the powers were responsible. To get revenge, he takes on the powers in an escalating series of bare-knuckled bouts, but comes to realise it wasn't the powers, but in fact his own uncle Francis who was responsible, and John Paul takes violent and fatal retribution. As the film ends, Winnie and John Paul are about to be reunited when Farmer Dunn shoots John Paul for trespassing on his land. Their forbidden love ends in tragedy. Everybody okay? You've all got the story? Okay, so I suppose the first thing that as we're doing, as we're doing this in the context of the Equal Status Act, maybe we'll just have a quick um, reminder of where the travellers are in the Equal Status Act. Does anybody know what kind of rights they have? Well, members of the travelling community are entitled to uh, equal treatment. And if you share cultures and traditions of the travelling community, obviously you're entitled to equal treatment as well, equal status. And are they an ethnic minority? I sound like a teacher right now. Uh, they're not here in Ireland, funnily yeah. enough, but they yeah. are in the UK. Yeah, that's a peculiarity, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And w so what are they considered here, does anybody know? I think they're a social group, isn't that it? They're considered a social group here and an ethnic minority abroad. And I think that's to their disadvantage in that maybe resources would be put into them if they could be considered as an ethnic minority. Will we start with King of the Travellers? Mm -hmm. What did you think about it? Well, the, the very opening scene, I, I couldn't, I watched it twice actually, the, just the opening scene, just to get, you know, it was all men, you know, it was all men, there was a little boy obviously, the, you know, John Paul at the beginning of, of the story, if you like, but um, all men, there wasn't one woman, not, mm. in, and I thought that was quite interesting in terms of a lot of these things, and even the bare knuckle fight that happened later on, that was a male preserve as well. There were no women involved in that. And women were in the background to nurse somebody when they got injured, or to do all of those more traditional things, but not involved in any of the real decision making or things that went on or any type of leadership. Did that uh, surprise you, Tom? No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd say the same might be said about the settled community. That's methods. exactly it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's just mm. mirroring to some degree, although I suppose. The, the female of the gender has kind of clawed at some equality within the settled community, but so maybe... very still quite traditional, the community, yeah. and very much the way, say, Ireland would have been in the 1950s, 60s, even 70s. Mm -hmm. And that came through, I think, in the film. Mm -hmm. I thought it was quite stereotypical. You know, they had the traveller stereotype, the bare knuckle fighting, the, the segregation between men and women. I don't know enough about the traveller community to know if it's still like that today, but I imagine, like every community, it's, it's moved on a little bit. So um, that was something that struck me. Mm. So, um, did you like the film, Tom, as you started talking about it? Was it um, I, I don't know what I thought of it really, in, in terms of, as I said, there was all you, the, the traditional said, the segregation of male and female. The other thing that I thought was interesting was, um, the, when you're talking about education there, the, the woman in it who, I think she now lived in a house, she said, she seemed to be the uh, partner yes. of um, Michael Collins there uh, uh, in, in the movie, uh, in, in Pavine, that was the other one. But um, she seemed to have education, whereas in I, I just, for the men it didn't seem to be quite the same, you know, quite the same, uh, what will I say, uh, mo most of the women were more interested in it than the men. Mm -hmm. In education you mean? Is in it? education, yeah. yeah. Which is often the way as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. what, what, what will other people have to say about it? Um, it's interesting because the movie got very negative reviews. Yeah. Like it, um, in comparison to a lot of other films that have portrayed the traveller community, is kind of like a documentary style, like even like Pavi Lakin. But while this one, while they had like the, while it was made by a lot of travellers themselves that were involved in the project, um, it actually got very negative reviews. And I was just thinking about it. maybe that's to do as well with how the critics and how the general public that perceive films, they don't usually, they don't, they 
they step outside the margin of the traveller community. So I think maybe that's representat representative as well of how we look at films as well and how another social group of people might look at a film in a completely different way and view that as a good film. So I thought that was very interesting because uh, reading up about it on Rotten Tomatoes, the, the critic oh, review site, yeah, um, it got, I think, 25%, which is very low. Very low. Very low. Yeah. And yeah. is it because we're using mainstream criteria yeah, to judge another yeah. community? That's exactly and what is, I was is thinking. Is that fair, yeah. do you think? On one hand, no, definitely not. Like, yeah, but um, on the other hand, it's all we know. So, like, how can we come up with this new system on the spot for a specific film? But if it's all we know, does that mean we're never going to be open to minority groups? It's unfair to say. You do, there's no way to tell. I don't think so. Yeah. Is there a onus on us as the settled community to open up to minority groups? We should be, but whether we do or not is a different question. Oh, just as a matter of interest, what mm. were the objections of the people who gave it such um, ratings? They said the plot was very predictable. Mm. It, um, the audience always knew where it was going. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, what else? There was... I don't think it was well acted in yeah. parts. I think the storyline was very, yeah, very predictable. Yeah. I would have given it the 25% on <laughs> yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, I think. I, I, to, to me, I, to be quite honest, I, I couldn't get the theme of the, of the story because it kind of just ticking the stereotype boxes that we know of. Mm. So there wasn't anything that I thought brought to the table to say, okay, this is what what the traveller community is all about. So that it could change my mind or it could change people's minds on what they think they know about the traveller community. So I think that's probably the most reason why the critics you're talking about uh, gave them 25%, whatever, because there wasn't anything, because usually in a film, you've got to get a story or something, a lesson out of it but I didn't get any lesson out of it, except that to me it was just kind of ticking the stereotype boxes mm -hmm. that... The bare knuckle fighting, yeah, exactly. the feuding communities, yes. the big wedding, the gaudiness, that, that, you know, all of the stereotypes, that the negative stereotypes yeah, that are out exactly. there about travellers mm -hmm. were portrayed in this film, which, you know, makes it, you wonder what was the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. There's, there's some way where one, one mother asked his, his son, why can't you get a job? And he said, oh, I can't get a job because I'm a traveller. So to me, it was almost like they were saying travellers doesn't work. Yeah. You know, you, that's you, what it, it, was, it meant to me. It was almost like a defeatist exactly. attitude already. Yeah. 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 But do you know the man who wrote um, Pave Lacking? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, uh, P. Perry something? No, what I, is it? I've forgotten it. Ogden, isn't it? Ogden. Yeah, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. I just did a little bit of reading about him and he, he was he said that, if, say for instance, Pave lacking is, is not, an, it's not, there is no real plot in it. Again, we'll be talking about it in a minute, so I don't want to jump the gun. Yeah. But he was saying that it's time for us to not copy, not to emulate Hollywood and to do everything the way Hollywood, in other words, a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah. So, and Pave lacking certainly fits into that. Yeah. So maybe King of the Travellers fits into that as well and that it's kind of like a snapshot, like it's a new form of film that's showing us something about the traveling community and just to go back to what you were saying Evans is it the responsibility of the minority group to um, sanitize themselves so that they become acceptable to the settled community if we are I, going I, to integrate I don't think can, just so that I finish this if we're going to integrate and going to open up to integration should we not accept the traveling community bare knuckle boxing big gypsy weddings and all you know even though it's yeah. not our to me, I don't think they needed to, or they need to sanitize, because sanitization to me means like trying to cover up something that is, that is underneath. It's not that. I think they could, they could have done a good job of showing what the travel community is all about, if that's what they want. But at the same time, I need to get a lesson out of it. I need to learn something which I didn't know before. Every time I watch a movie, I need, unless if it's just a comedy, then most probably I wouldn't be looking for some kind of lesson. But even if you look in comedy, comedy films or whatever, there is some kind of a lesson that if you watch it, you're going to come out with it, which might change you a little bit of the, your, 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 your you, you real understanding. Do you think that's the responsibility of filmmakers to actually make you change it is. your mind? To me, I think it is. 
uh, why would it? Why should it be the um, responsibility? I'm not saying they have to bring this grand uh, lesson, but from there I have to have a clear understanding, or I have to completely change my mind. But what I'm saying is, to me, every filmmaker, every time they make a movie. It has to bring something new to the table, which I didn't know about. It might not be that big, yeah. but it has to be there. So in, to me, that's in this film, I didn't get it. But didn't it show you something like the bare knuckle boxing and the, the, um, the, the big wedding, for instance? Didn't it show you that, that you may not have been aware of before? I mean, the, the roughness, I suppose, we might say, the, the horror of living in a campsite like that, were you aware of that before, Evans? Yes, I was. You were? Okay, so we maybe you to, were... You have to remember that mm. another viewer could be Probably completely educated by it. Like, this you know, is it, yeah. It's all, it all comes down to the person. It's down to the individual. Yeah. And as well, I was just thinking earlier as well, a lot of the travelling community defended the film and said, that, well, this is our culture mm -hmm. and we're putting forward our culture. While a lot of the criticism about the film was... Um, like, what culture is this? This is not culture. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that the idea of culture in general is something that isn't understood by people outside of exactly. that culture. Exactly. So it is culture. Like, it, yeah. you do, like, it's still important that this representation is still up there on screen, yeah. on screen whether it's a negative mm -hmm. representation or not. And I, I'm wondering if the learning, as you say, some people might have got a lot from it, some people didn't, you know, wouldn't get anything from it, but some of the learning might be subtle. So, so for example, one of the points was that, that you made yourself in terms of um, one of the um, guys in it saying that he couldn't get a job because he was um, a traveller. So that's, you know, that, that's, if you like, a subtle point that just kind of happens to go in there. But it's a, it's a fact, you know, in terms of for some, you know, obviously for, for some travellers, they feel that they cannot get a job because of the fact, because of their culture. That's well, one... The guy couldn't even get served, he couldn't even get served in the bar at the start. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's, he couldn't even get served, never yes. mind get a job. So. And, and then another point of it, in terms of your home, that they were being evicted from the site. Do you remember when the guard came along, they had a permit, they could stay for 28 more days. So those are things that just, you can miss things sometimes in a movie that actually, you know, they're quite pertinent in terms of these are real things that, that happen to yeah. that community. You know, and so. this, this has actually been traveller proofed, Catherine Joyce told me, that, you know, if, if it hadn't been traveller proofed, I would really have objected. I have to say, I was devastated at the end of the film. I found it very hard watching because I thought this is a very negative mm -hmm. profile of the travelling community and I'm not seeing the positive parts of it. And then I phoned up Catherine Joyce and I asked her about it and she said, no, this has been traveller proofed. And this is, yeah. this is definitely part of the travelling community. And I guess maybe that's what we have to accept. Maybe that's that it. This is it. This we is want to see something happy and it yeah. isn't happy. It's and it happy. is hard exactly. and it's yeah. and maybe that's yeah. the point. And so to not enjoy not watching it is a natural reaction because, yeah. you know, there are other films that I've watched and I've watched once and I have, you know, they're very compelling, like The Field, you know, yeah, that, yeah. And, all, and I'm thinking The Colour Purple, those type of films that you watch once, but you actually don't ever want to watch it again because it's, it's not <laughs> it's actually like entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, it might be right. educational, but yeah. it's not yeah. for, and I suppose for me, film watching is about, you know, enjoyment and yeah, entertainment yeah. and, you know, making me feel happy. So <laughs> perhaps from that point of view, you know, that's not the film. But, you know, I agree with your, your point that, um, that, you know, as well, a film should be educational and that you should take something from it. Mm -hmm. I think education will probably be the best way of integrating because by education, I don't mean sending children to school. I actually mean us. But I think actually that as well. Because to, of to, to educate ourselves, immerse ourselves exactly. in, the, in their community yeah. and learn some things. And probably when we come, come out of there, obviously there are some people who are going to be against that. But a few of us who have a changed mind and we might change one person and it mm. continues like that. Rather than just continue watching the communities which are different from us on a screen or on a lens mm. and just Can you hold that thought Evans? Because it's going to lead us very nicely into the next film which is Pave Lacking in school as part of that. So just before we go back to that thought, can we just remind ourselves of the plot of it please? Directed by debut filmmaker Perry Ogden and shot in documentary style, Pave Lacking or The Traveller Girl tells the story of 10 year old Winnie who lives in a Dublin halting site with her mother and eight siblings. The film gives us glimpses into Winnie's life which has lived on the margins of society. We see Winnie fetching water at the campsite, we see her troubles with school, the constant fights which lead to her expulsion and her love of art and drawing. We see Winnie and her sister staining clothes from a clothes bank to help make ends meet. With these snapshots of Winnie's everyday life, 
Ogden paints an unsentimental portrait of a life that's lived uneasily between freedom and dispossession. A totally different film, wasn't it? What did you think of it? Um, I absolutely love Pavi Lackey. Yeah, I was a big fan of it. Um, I love the style of it. How even when you start watching it, you're actually not sure if it's a documentary or not. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed Pavi Lackey. And compared to King of the Travelers, mm. I just they are, as you said, two completely different films. You, but it's interesting in their representation because a lot of the representations are the same, while it differs a lot as well. Mm. Yeah. But you, you were talking about school. And of course, school was a very big part of Pave Lacking, wasn't it? What did you think of the school principal? You remember the um, yes. Winnie? Yeah. Wasn't it Winnie she was called? Little girl, yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah, and Winnie in real life as well, actually, yeah. wasn't it? Um, she was an amazing actor, I thought, really. But anyway, for, you know, for somebody who was just plucked out of obscurity. And, but in terms of her schooling, what did you think of the way the principal handled she, she was being called names in the schoolyard. She called somebody else a, I was a name. horrified by all of that, I have to say. Um, in terms of, you know, the, starting with the teacher at the schoolyard, the kids were calling her names. Mm. You know, she called her name back whenever then this fight broke out. But the teacher came along and singled her out and took her. It was the fourth fight that week or something. Yeah. Um, so that's one point, but the teacher did nothing in terms of establishing um, you know, the root cause. She, the symptom was the fight, if you like, so she took, removed that. And the principal the same. They never asked, they, I didn't see anywhere in the movie where they spoke to the children about this is not acceptable to be calling somebody else yeah. a name. I never saw that. Um, it's like, like she was a victim in that case. I, I, obviously she was victimised in the schoolyard, but she was also victimised by both the teacher and the principal. Yeah. Um, that she was punished, she was sent home, her mother was called for. And then there was the difficulty getting her back into the education system again. And, um, and that opened up my eyes for me in terms of uh, prejudices, in terms of uh, discrimination, in terms of what the uh, traveller community actually faced. Yeah, and, and the idea of suspending her for a week. I mean, where was she going to go for that week except back to the caravan? I mean, there was very little understanding on the part of the principal, wasn't there, that a week off school because you're having problems in the schoolyard surely can't be the response to that situation. And then she goes off and, of course, she gets up to all, all sorts of little things, and naturally sniffing glue and so on while she's out of school. But what did you think of the, the way the, the mother handled the school thing? Do you remember how she talked about the settled school and she didn't want... She wanted her kids, she, she actually spoke at one stage about the traveller's school, starting at 11 o'clock in the morning, finishing at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I thought, oh my God, that is so awful that their, their education is truncated even within the school day. So the mother was, wanted them, rightly, to go to a settled school. And I remember a line that she used, or which is, I can't remember which of them used, if they go to a settled school, they'll have good problems. I think it was Winnie herself yeah, who said yeah, it. Yeah, so good yeah, problems, yeah. and I thought, yeah. Winnie, that's a really good way of putting it, you know, mm. that if if you only had good problems to deal with. Yes. So, um, anybody, any comment about that? I think it was a very true representation of that situation. It's a huge problem from what I know. Um, I know um, one um, friend very well, and she isn't a traveller, but her father would have been a traveller. And she is one of the most intelligent women I know, and yet she left school after her. I don't even know if she did her junior cert. She left school very early because like that she was being teased and called names and she just dropped out and it's such a shame, you know, and I don't think it just happens um, in the traveling community. I think it happens as well in disadvantaged uh, areas in general, but I think in the traveling community, you've a whole other host of problems where you're moving from place to place. So how can you even stay in a school? Mm -hmm. I think it's so, so, so important to, I suppose, educate the educators to do everything they can to keep those kids in school because it's, it's the difference between making a better life for yourself. And I'm not saying, you know, turning your back on your traveller heritage, but just making a better life for yourself and, you know, perhaps getting a different type of a job or having the ability to earn money and, and be educated and, and make a choice for yourself about what type of a life you want. Whereas if you, if you, don't, if you don't see those other options, then your life is going to be the exact same as your parents. And I think that's probably true across the board, yeah. not necessarily just within that community, but I think it's very sad. Do you remember when she was, when she was talking to the, the two social workers or whatever they were? 
the mother yes. Yes. about school. Yeah. And she said more or less what you've just said there, dear delegate, that it was she wanted them to have jobs. I mean, that was that's something I think fairly revolutionary for for a, a, a traveller to say. Like, I want my daughters to be educated and have jobs. And then the sadness around not being able to get them into the school. Yeah. And do you remember they were moved by the county council? That was. A, we'll talk about that and the significance of that in a minute. But in terms of schooling, I think if what they were trying to do was to to let themselves off responsibility for having to school the kids. That's what I read at least. And for the kids, I mean, just that moving, you know, children, change can, you know, can be very difficult for them. It's hard enough to start school anyway, when you go into and you know you make your friends and, and then to be plucked out and have to, like, you're different already, but then having to come in in the middle of a school term, I, I mean, I just think as, as a mother, I'd be horrified for my children if I had to do that. And I know they'd find it really hard. So, you know, it must be, Horrendous for them. Absolutely. Can I just, because I, I, I cut across yeah. the point you say, I, I remember you mentioned when the a previous film, King of the Travelers, the issue of uh, women being in the, in the background rather than being on the forefront. I think education also plays an important part mm -hmm. because as soon as, as long as somebody is educated, I'm not trying to glamorize education as something that is uh big but to me i think education is important in empowering people whether women, men and women because if you're educated you can stand up for yourself you get the confidence that you can stand toe to toe with anybody but if you're not you are dependent on somebody usually in this in this instance most of most of the time it will be a man if somebody is married it will be providing and as long as somebody is providing for you they dictate what they want you mm -hmm. to do and what you know what not to do so I think education plays, it should or will play an important part in empowering women in the travel. Mm, I don't think we can overstate the importance of it actually. Mm. David, you were... Sorry, sorry to be jumping on over here, but just to what Deirdre was saying, I just, um, from personal experience, I went to school, secondary school, and there was a group of travellers in the school as well. And I was surprised when I saw Pavi Lakin because there was such conflict between the two while in my school it was different. It wasn't that there was conflict, but it was just segregation mm -hmm. and not done by the teachers or like on mandatory, mandatory segregation, but by just the students and the travelers. It was just, it was just, yeah, you just didn't like, you would talk in class maybe, but it's just when you, you would always go your separate ways. Yeah. And it's, I found that kind of unusual. But then again, I looked at it in the way of Winnie is by herself. It's almost like she's on her own mm -hmm. in the school compared to having a group. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's so difficult for Winnie. And obviously there's going to be some conflict there, mm -hmm. especially when people have more of a closed mind. Yeah. 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 And plus their kids, they're learning themselves. Like they have to be educated. And it's the job of the teacher and the principal to also educate the settled kids here because Winnie's the only one who's punished. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Do you remember the, the, they were in this relatively okay place and they were moved on by the county council and all and they were conned do you remember uh yes, what was I the just, mother's name um, what was it i can't remember what her name Winnie's was mother, winnie's mother name, yeah, so that's yeah. terrible now but anyway um she, she she's persuaded that if she moves up the road that's there right. it's a much better site yeah. and you're away from the traffic and you have your water and what happens they go into an absolutely muck ridden situation yeah. and do you remember when she was sweeping away the water and the muck yeah. does anybody see that as a kind of a metaphor you know, I was just looking and it, the camera went right down and you saw her just sweeping. Really? It was a pointless task. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what yeah. I was trying to yeah. say. She was just, she was like swimming against a tide. She was, exactly. And it yeah. was, I suppose, representative of, I suppose, the struggles in her life. Exactly. And it didn't matter how much she tried to push them away, more and more kept yeah. kind of coming back. It just kept back coming back. She swept the water, went away for a little minute yeah. or two and then back again. And so it was like there were troubles. Um, do you remember the doctor's role? And anybody comment on the, the um, Winnie and the doctor and the very gentle way the doctor... Do you remember that when she... Why was she sent to the doctor? I've actually forgotten, but the doctor was listening to her chest and she had her top off, she had her bra on, but she was like this all the time. So the modesty of the travelling community, they're very, you know, they have a, what they call the traveller's code, which is outside the settled community. And they're very moral, you know, and they like moral standards. But I was, even though the woman, the doctor was a woman, she was very modest, wasn't she? Mm. But what, what did you think about the way the doctor handled her? Did you, does anybody remember it? She was very gentle with I her. I thought she was very gentle. Wasn't she? Very, yeah. yeah. And do you remember she was asking her, so Winnie, what's your date of birth? Do, yes. And yeah. Winnie says, what? Yes. What's your date of birth? 
I, I don't know. What age are you, Winnie? Uh, I, I, I think I'm 11. Oh, when will you be 12? I, uh, well, now Rosie is two years That's older. Right, yeah, yeah. She actually didn't, didn't know, know her, her date, date of birth. birth. Mm. That's horrific, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, I, I'm not saying it for itself. I'm just saying mm. for where she is in her life. The mm, fact yeah. that she doesn't even know her date of birth. Would that be usual? Do you I don't know that, Deirdre. Because I know in some communities, birthdays are not yeah, given the same important. importance yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. I think possibly mm. in India, you, you know, it's not a big deal. You just don't attach any importance to the actual day. You might know your month, mm -hmm. and you might yeah. know what age you are. Mm -hmm. So it would be hard to judge it without knowing if that was well, usual or was it just that yeah. nobody really cared about her birthday. Yeah, I, I suppose um, it is important in the Irish context. Yes. So, you know, that, that, I suppose, yeah. yeah. But Evans, uh, can I just ask, your heritage country, yeah. is, there, is there a group like the travelling community that's isolated and marginalised? Probably is there. I'm not sure, but I, I, I don't know. Because usually in Africa, they usually different tribes. So if you come from the uh, larger tribe or the majority tribe, which is where I come from. Which country do you come from? Zimbabwe. 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 So you might not know that there are other tribes who might be in that situation because you're living in some kind of a pub or somewhere in, in the larger tribe. So maybe it's there, but I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. and what about birthdays as we're talking about them? In I think in, in Zimbabwean context, because we were former colonies, we are former colonies of the British, almost everything that you find there is almost like you are in, in, in England, mm -hmm. from education, even if you walk to a villa, in a village you find a grandmother who can speak with you in English, because everybody went to school where it was British run, and it just continued from the generation. So I, it, it's very difficult for me to say you, you can find somebody who doesn't know their birthdays birth because in the British context, like you say, yeah. is that what we actually... Yes, that's follow. what's been imposed yeah. on you, I guess, yeah. Just to go back to Winnie uh, for a minute, do you remember when she was speaking to the Russian woman in the shop? She went into a shop and she was looking at some, I can't remember what she was looking at to tell you that it's some trinket. She was asking questions, oh the hair, do you remember the, the hair and stuff? Is that hair, is that, um, oh that was in the hairdressing salon, sorry. But she was talking to the Russian woman and she was asking her about different things. Yeah. And uh, do you remember what she said? Do they speak like you in Russia? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody comment on that? But she had never, she'd never met anybody yeah. from another country other than Irish people. She had mm. never travelled, she had no concept of otherness that other than you know her immediate community yeah but the, the lack of linguistic awareness i guess is what i'm trying yeah. to get at that in fact like most kids her age would probably have known that the lang well, Russian language another language yeah. yeah my kids are always ask me what language is she speaking yeah. what language yeah. is no but then their mother no is concept. their mother is multi lingual yeah so they right? but they, or, or just even the society we live in we have yeah. a german yeah. neighbor we yeah. have a romanian mm -hmm. neighbor so they hear all these other languages yeah. but I suppose her, her world was so small in, yeah. in one way that she just she had no exposure to. But they do have their own cant, don't they? Their, yeah. But you have to admire Winnie, how yeah. she tries to go out and educate herself. Mm. Yes. Do you yes. know? Like, and that's kind of the theme throughout the film as well. And she's faced with all this, um, all these obstacles in her way. But she is just trying to overcome them one day at a time, just like the mother. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they are very admirable, the two yeah, characters. The, two mother, the mother yeah, and the daughter. Yeah. So they get 10 out of 10 from us today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's a really positive note in which to finish this week. So thank you all for being part of this very interesting discussion.